Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's August 23rd, 2023. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Usyk versus Dubois. Let's give an update. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I have my trusted phone here. And I'm on the website oddschecker.com, right, oddschecker.com. And, of course, this site is telling me that the odds have gotten longer than when I first picked Dubois and got something like a plus 650 or something in that range. Now, according to oddschecker, the latest lines, believe it or not, have Dubois as a plus 700. Let's talk about this fight. The over-under is six and a half rounds. Let me repeat that. Six and a half rounds. Right? I believe this is the heavyweight division. I'm going to take the over six and a half rounds on this particular over-under. The logic simply being that while Dubois could get a KO at any time, if, in fact, it's Usyk who has the upper hand, he's going to wait a few rounds before trying to knock out Dubois. Now, let's be clear here on the fight. I don't expect Dubois to win. If I had a gun to my head and if I had to pick a side on who was going to win the fight, it would be Usyk. But what I want people to do is to understand that the odds matter. Understand, when you're getting a plus 700 on Dubois, who's only lost once, right, who's already made the mistake of staying outside and trying to box in the fight he lost. That's the fight where his eye gets messed up. He takes a knee. Right now he has the experience to know that's not the way to go. My point is simply, while Dubois could get stopped earlier because he was down against Kevin Lorena, I believe that Dubois, with power, with speed, is going to command some deference. He's going to have to get some respect from Usyk early in this fight. So I believe the fight's going to go a few rounds. If Dubois gets the early KO, you're okay. Because even though you would lose the under six and a half part of the play, right, just to understand you would be getting seven to one on the other part of the play. Let's be clear too. Seven to one means that if these guys fought eight times, the current line is suggesting that Dubois would only win once. You and I know that line is ridiculous. That would be an absurd line if Dubois was fighting Tyson Fury. If you have power and you have hand speed, particularly at heavyweight, a knockout-centric division, in my opinion, you enter the ring with at least a 30% chance of winning the fight. Let's be clear, too, on the blueprint for the fight. I want Dubois to enter the ring understanding that he cannot allow a boxing match to break out. The blueprint on the fight, in my opinion, is, we'll name a famous fight here, the Rumble in the Jungle. Right? Dubois has to be George Foreman. Right? Understand, Foreman today is one of boxing's best interviews. Foreman today talks about how you can't wait on a boxer. You don't want to box a boxer. Right? Foreman's philosophy is if you know you're the puncher in the fight, you have to go after the boxer. You have to put your hands on him. You have to hit him. 
right? So just to understand, I know the rumble in the jungle did not turn out well for Foreman. But I need for people to understand that that outcome was an outlier outcome. Foreman has the right idea. Foreman takes Ali's legs away from him. Understand how that fight evolves. Ali ends up over by the ropes. Something is corner didn't want him to do. Ali then starts, as he would say later, rope-a-doping. Right? But understand, Foreman takes Ali's agility away from him. Forces Ali to cover up by the ropes. Now, Ali, being in his 30s, as Usyk um, is, was able to find a way over by the ropes to protect himself while hitting Foreman as Foreman came on the way in, right? If Foreman had to do that fight over again, all Foreman would have to do to win the fight because Foreman, of course, is the champion entering that fight. In other words, the burden's on Ali to take the title, a tie, and Foreman keeps his belt. All Foreman, the far more active fighter, had to do that fight to win it. Is when Ali went over to the ropes, all Foreman had to do was gingerly go over there, throw a few jabs, motion Ali to the middle of the ring. Right? If Ali doesn't come, in my opinion, the judges would have awarded Foreman those rounds. Right? You cannot win a heavyweight title without engaging the champion. Right? Instead, Foreman followed Ali over to the ropes and threw himself out. Right? Used all his stamina on trying to break through Ali's guard when he didn't have to. Just taking away Ali's legs should have allowed Foreman to retain his title. Right? Let me point out too, and I know this is a sore point for old timers, but the count in that fight is suspect. Foreman is given a nine count, not a 10 count. I encourage people to look at that film. Let's talk about a more recent fight where you had a dandy, right? A more coordinated, smaller guy, and you had a bigger guy who is blowing it for part of the fight. And that's the Steve Cunningham Tyson Fury fight. Well, understand, Cunningham comes in and he's actually trying to knock out Fury. He's loading up on right hands. Fury foolishly is trying to fight Cunningham from the outside. Dubois can't afford to make this mistake. It's only after Fury gets dropped on a right hand that Cunningham has thrown before in the fight. Right? Cunningham's going for the knockout. That Fury gets off the canvas and realizes he needs to chase Cunningham. He needs to be the George Foreman of the Rumble in the Jungle. Right? So then, of course, Fury starts chasing Cunningham. Fury breaks a few rules because the chasing involves forearms and stuff like that. Just understand, Dubois cannot allow the first half of the Fury-Cunningham fight to happen here. He needs to chase Usyk. He needs to land on Usyk. He cannot get drawn into Usyk's movements or Usyk's feints, right? The idea has to be, I want a shootout. I'm going to give you no room to breathe. Now, we've seen a heavyweight do that to Usyk. I encourage people to go back and re-watch the opening rounds of Usyk against Derek Chisora. Now, unfortunately, let's be blunt here. This is not a fan site. Chisora does not have Dubois' power. Chisora does not have Dubois' suddenness. 
So if I'm Dubois, what I need to do is I need to channel Derek Chisora, but I need to do it with more power, more physicality. I need to get Usyk up against the ropes like Chisora did. But when I have him up against the ropes and he has his defense ready and he's in some kind of Ali-type rumble in the jungle type setup, I need to take a step back at that point. And I need to let him know I'm not going to throw myself out with you and your defensive construct. I'm going to chase you over to the ropes. I'm going to do enough to win the round. Then I'm going to back away. I'm going to force you to come off the ropes so I can chase you some more. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to let you dictate the terms of the pocket. I'm not going to spend a lot of time watching you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time being inactive. Right? If I'm going to be inactive to pace myself, then I need to set that up so I rest for only one round. Right? I give away a round and rest. Could you imagine the rumble in the jungle if in the sixth round Foreman just decided, okay, I've taken away Ollie's legs. Let me just back away and catch my breath and rest for three minutes. Right? What would have happened? Ollie would have come off the ropes. Okay, fine. Foreman, who had above average defense. I'm just telling you, Foreman to me is more skilled than almost everyone in today's heavyweight division, right? Foreman could have taken a step back, wrapped himself up like this, couldn't have cared less if light hitting Ali hit him in the midsection. All he had to do was cover his temple, cover his chin, let Ali come out, throw a few punches. As long as it's a 10-9 round, Foreman would have gotten his rest then could have come back out the very next round and chased Ali over to the corner. Right? That's what Dubois has to do here. I believe he has at least a 30% chance of winning this fight. Not a 1 in 8 chance. Not a 1 in 8 chance. But a 3 out of 10 chance. Right? But he has to use the early rounds. He needs to take the crowd in Poland and the judges out of the fight early. In other words, whatever fandom there is, right? Usyk enters the ring. People are all excited. He's the heavyweight champ. He's not fighting in UAE or the UK. He's actually, you know... Um, in Poland, Dubois has to put a stop to that early. He has to remind us, I'm the bigger guy. I believe I have the harder punch. I'm going to be active. This cruiserweight is going to have to stop me. I'm here to bank rounds. He's going to have to be on his back foot, and I'm going to be hyper-aggressive in chasing him around the ring. That has to be not just the first round. That has to be the second round. That has to be the third round. You remember how frustrated the crowd was when a very cautious Anthony Joshua refused to let his hands go against Usyk. Right? Dubois needs to let his hands go. Right? Dubois needs to let Usyk know, look, I don't care if you're a lefty. I'm coming after you. Dubois has to adopt a Rocky Marciano mindset. If Usyk has his hands up and is all defensed up, Dubois has to let Usyk feel his power. So if he can't get through Usyk's hands, he needs to hit Usyk's forearms. Right? Be active. Let the other guy feel your power. Let the other guy understand 
He's the one on the back foot. Right? You need to treat Usyk like Golovkin treated Kell Brook. Right? Come after him. Let him know, look, I'm in your face. Let the judges know. I'm going to be too active here for you to rob me of the rounds where I'm much more active than this cruiserweight who's come to my division. Right? If Dubois takes an opposite approach, if he takes the Joshua approach, and he's spending four or five rounds trying to read the lay of the land, right? if he's there watching Usyk and taking notes on Usyk's movement and not pushing Usyk and thinking, gee, I need to pace myself to go 12 rounds, if he allows a pattern to set up where the crowd is thrilled, they see he's not doing much. They're able to root for Usyk. The first third of the fight is slow. Usyk's up 3-1 or 4-0 after three or four rounds. Then Dubois will have made a mistake. Right? He can't fight this fight like he fought the Joe Joyce fight. He can't fight this fight like Tyson Fury, who was actually trying to mock Steve Cunningham early in the fight while Cunningham's trying to knock him out. He can't fight the opening rounds of this fight like Tyson Fury did against Steve Cunningham. No, he has to come out like George Foreman. The attitude has to be, hey, player, I think you're the smaller man. I'm coming after you. Even if I'm awkward, you and I are going to know that I'm on my front foot and you're on your back foot. If I take away your legs and I get you over by the ropes and you're covering up, I'm going to consider that a victory because I will have taken away your movement. And I'll take my chances since I'm the bigger man in that scenario. Right? Force Usyk to try to do a rope-a-dope. Then let him know, hey, son, did you think I was going to throw 150 punches this round? Did you think I was going to throw myself out this round? No, if you're on the ropes covering up, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to motion you. I'm going to be a showman. I'm going to motion you to the middle of the ring. I'm going to say, hey, come on. Let's have at it. Get you off the ropes, then I'm going to chase you again. Let me point out, too. Believe it or not, what I'm talking about happened in the Tony Bellew fight. Go back and look at that fight. Bellew, at one point, is motioning to Usyk. He's saying, hey, come fight me. The crowd goes crazy. That fight's in Bellew's backyard. The problem was Bellew had the wrong spacing. Bellew allows himself to be close to the ropes. When you motion to the other guy to come fight me, you need to make sure that you're more than halfway across the ring. So when the guy comes to fight you, you actually have the room of the whole ring if you need it. And of course, the minute the guy gets out of a defensive stance, the minute he stops rope-a-doping and starts to come forward, you need to come forward. Right? If the rounds are just a progression of rounds where you're coming forward and he's going over to the ropes and covering up defensively, you're going to win those rounds. Dubois is a live opponent while I think Usyk's going to win. Right? Just to understand that these odds, I believe Dubois is the betting side of the play. I'll roll the dice and I'll agree. Dubois looked tired against Richard Lardy. I'll agree. Dubois hits the canvas multiple times against Kevin Lorena. I don't quite believe the knee story. If the knee was that bad, how's Dubois so quickly in the ring? Right? I'll agree Dubois, it's going to be a high wire act. I'll agree that Usyk caught Bellew in the middle rounds of their fight. 
But I'll be the casino's huckleberry here. I'm going to take the over six and a half rounds, right? With, of course, taking Dubois simply to win at plus 700, right? I'm going to take the over six and a half rounds. And let's just say if you're nervous about the fact that it's six and a half by rounds, right? By rounds. You're getting so much on the Dubois side of the play that you could say, okay, Casino, I'll buy the sixth round, Usyk to win in six. I'll buy the fifth round, Usyk to win in five. You're getting so much gravy with the plus 700 on the Dubois side of the play that you can make the numbers work. That's how I see it. I believe Dubois is the betting side of the play, plus 700. I'll take the over six and a half rounds, right? If Dubois wins early, great. You know, I'll have to survive on the plus 700. If the fight goes over, I believe that's a minus 140, great. I'm hedged. If the fight goes over and Dubois is the one who wins, late knockout, whatever, then you're in the penthouse. That's how I'm playing it. I didn't even get the plus 700, just to be blunt. I, I believe I got like a plus 650, and I thought, this is free candy. What's the casino doing? So you can imagine, if I were to rebet the fight, yeah, yeah, I would take the plus 700 over the plus 650 I got. But even with the plus 650, I feel blessed. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Dubois needs to realize he's fighting in Poland. Dubois needs to realize that because of Usyk's history, Usyk's going to be the house fighter in Poland. Right? Just straight up. So Dubois needs to take the crowd out of the fight. He needs to let the judges know, I'm going to be active. He needs to think about George Foreman. And he needs to realize, when you're the puncher, you need to touch the boxer. You can't wait on the boxer. You have to go after the boxer. He needs to think about the opening of the rumble in the jungle. Right? Don't waste time. Get after it. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.